Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, they say that March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has an amendment to this ancient bromide. Yes, this year, March and our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, both came in like lions. And last Wednesday morning, when he summoned me to his office, I could tell by the tone of his roar that he had gotten up on the wrong side of his cage. <laughs> As I entered his office, however, I was thrown off guard somewhat by his bluff and hearty manner. In fact, his first two words to me were replete with camaraderie and affection. Sit down. <laughs> yes, sir. Miss Brooks, I arrived at school this morning 15 minutes ahead of anyone else, as is my woke. It certainly is. And as I... It certainly is what? Your won't. That is, getting here 15 minutes ahead of anyone else is an old won't of yours. Yes, sir, that one won't goes way back. And after working for you for almost five years, I guess I know as much about your different won'ts as any teacher in this Hush! Place. <laughs> Sorry, sir. As I passed through the hall, I noticed one of the classroom doors was ajar. It was your room, Miss Brooks. And as I reached in to close the door, I saw your blackboards. They hadn't been stolen. <laughs> no, no. But they hadn't been erased, either. <laughs> you know very well, Miss Brooks, that it has long been a strict rule in this institution that nothing is to remain on the blackboards overnight. Oh, I know that, sir, but some of the students must have made some notes after I left the room. You see, we've been studying the Shakespearean tragedies, and the class is taking to it with great enthusiasm. Miss Brooks, I'm quite certain that the immortal bard did not pen the words I saw on your blackboard. <laughs> What words, Mr. Conklin? One line said, and I quote, Old Man Conklin is a bird brain. <laughs> oh, that's impossible, sir. You misread the blackboard. What it probably said was, uh, uh, Old King Lear is a bird brain. Old King Lear is a bird brain? Who would want to write a thing like that? His daughters. They hated his gut. Uh, they did. <laughs> They were very mean to him. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I hold you responsible for the condition of your blackboard. And remember, it is from such petty beginnings that more dangerous, subversive activities can stem. I'll have a loyalty check before class. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, don't you think you're being unduly severe about a relatively minor transgression? Severe, perhaps. But I challenge your use of the word unduly. After all, I am the man to whom this entire school looks for leadership. As your leader, I must be firm, decisive, wielding my power with justice but authority. Yes, sire. Uh, sir. <laughs> I know you're quite a stickler for discipline, Mr. Conklin, and all of us on the faculty try to cooperate. But sometimes your manner is so stern and forbidding, it makes it difficult. What I'm trying to say, I guess, is that you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. I don't want flies. I want teachers. <laughs> I want teachers with a wholesome respect for the inspiring mottos on which I was brought up. Spare the rod and spoil the child. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And these others here in my office, uh, read the one on that wall, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Only the hands of the strong can hold the reins of leadership. Now the one next to it. Through power alone can you command respect. How true that is. <laughs> there seems to be a motto missing, Mr. Conklin Which one? Today, Madison High, tomorrow, the world <laughs> The janitor broke that one while he was dusting <laughs> Which brings me to another assignment I have for you this morning I want you to see that my office is thoroughly cleaned out I've asked my daughter Harriet to send in one of the boys to do the heavy work And they'll... Oh, good heavens, she'll probably send in that lame-brained boyfriend of hers, Walter Denton. Oh, Walter isn't so bad, Mr. Conklin. In fact, compared to his pal, Stretch Snodgrass, his mentality is positively Einsteinian. <laughs> if only he wouldn't speak. That voice of his drives me insane. <laughs> you 
It's just his age, Mr. Conklin. His voice is probably changing. Well, it had better hurry. <laughs> that boy sounds like a canary who has just caught a rancid batch of bird seed. <laughs> Come in. Salutations and top of the morning, dear principal. <laughs> Spit it out, Walter. <laughs> now that you're here, Denton, I'll be leaving shortly. So pay attention and I'll tell you what I want done. Yes, sir. Here you, you told me you're anticipating the national clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaign, which starts every spring. That is correct. I'm a great boy for getting the jump on the next fellow. Therefore, I want you to clean out all the old files you'll find in my closet. I haven't touched them since I took over this office from my predecessor, Mr. Darwell. Oh, I remember Mr. Darwell. There were times when we all thought he was a real tyrant. Oh, you did. <laughs> Dear old Mr. Darwell. <laughs> this file contains nothing but a bunch of antiquated records and correspondence kept by Darwell for years. You, Denton, will take them all out and destroy them. Yes, sir. Burn them up. To a cinder, sir. I'm going on a tour of classroom inspection. I haven't cracked the whip round here in... Uh, let's see now. Just how long has it been? Yesterday. <laughs> I received an exceptionally large batch of mail this morning, Miss Brooks. While I'm gone, I want you to open each and every letter, digest its content, and if it is not of sufficient importance to demand my personal attention, tear it up. I'll rip it to pieces, Mr. Conklin. Rumple it. Destroy it. I'll be merciless. Hurl it in the basket. I'll bash it with my bare fist. <laughs> I'm going now. Remember, let's get on the ball and stay there. <laughs> what am I, a seal? Gosh, Miss Brooks, he's in a pretty bad mood this morning, isn't he? Even for him. But you'd better get busy cleaning out those files, Walter. Yes, ma'am. They're right in this closet here. Gosh, what a bunch of junk. I'll never be able to sort this stuff alone. Will you give me a hand, Miss Brooks? I'd like to, Walter, but I've got to go through the mail. Why don't you get Stretch Snodgrass to help you? Oh, he's working in the supply room this morning. He's supposed to be taking inventory before the clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaign starts this spring. It seems kind of early to me. Me too, but Mr. Conklin's a great boy for getting the jump on the other fellow. I know. I've seen him jump on some of the other fellas. <laughs> Gosh, poor old Stretch will be lost down there. Maybe I'd better look in on him and see how he's doing. I wish you would, Miss Brooks. He doesn't know how to take inventory. He probably doesn't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass. Hi, Miss Brooks. How are things in the supply room, Stretch? All right, I guess. But I really don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Didn't Mr. Conklin tell you what to do? No, ma'am, not exactly. When I got to school this morning, his daughter Harriet handed me a memo from him which just said, go to the supply room and take inventory. <laughs> well, I'm on a spot, Miss Brooks. Why? I can't find no inventory no place. <laughs> On top of that, Mr. Conklin just stopped by and bawled me out something awful. Bawled you out? What were you doing? I wasn't doing nothing. I was just standing here like a stick. <laughs> well, what did Mr. Conklin say to you? He said, what's the idea of standing there like a stick? So I said, well, I ain't standing here like no stick. So then he said, who's your English teacher, boy? So right away I said, Miss Brooks is my English teacher. That's who's. <laughs> If he would have wasn't in such a bad mood, I'd have told him what a boot I get out of taking English off you. <laughs> Gosh, sometimes, sometimes I think I'd like to stay in your class forever, Miss Brooks. Sometimes I think you've got a very good chance. <laughs> but Stretch, if you're not too busy at the moment, would you please run down to Mr. Conklin's office and help Walter Denton clean out some old files? Well, I'd be glad to help Walter out, Miss Brooks. But Mr. Conklin told me to go from here to the biology lab and, and tell Mr. Boynton to wash all the cages for preparatory to painting them. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It seems there's some kind of campaign that starts in the spring. I'm familiar with it, Stretch. If you'll join Walter in Mr. Conklin's office, I'll be happy to deliver your message to Mr. Boynton. 
Of course, before I go to the biology lab, I've got to start my own campaign. You know, clean up, fix up, paint up. You mean your classroom, Miss Brooks? Classroom, nothing. Me. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, as our Miss Brooks headed for the biology lab, Stretch Snodgrass joined his pal, Walter Denton, in Mr. Conklin's office. They were cleaning out the files in the closet when Walter came to an old letter from the Board of Education. When he finished reading it, he grabbed Stretch by the shoulder. Hey, Stretch, read this letter. Well, let's see. Uh, you better read it to me, Walter. I'm saving my eyes for batting practice. <laughs> well, Stretch, it's addressed to Mr. Darwell when he was principal here. It says, Dear Sir, it has come to the attention of the board that you have been flagrantly dictatorial in your dealings with the faculty as well as the student body. As you know, I approve of discipline, but your conduct lately has been overboard. Therefore, please be advised that if you do not reverse your tyrannical methods at once, I will be forced to convene the, bo convene the board to consider your immediate replacement as principal of Madison High, sincerely Edgar T. Stone, chairman. You realize what that means, Stretch? Yeah. Mr. Darwell better watch his step. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Darwell hasn't been here for years. And Mr. Conklin could never have seen this letter. It was buried under all kinds of junk. Now, all we gotta do is get some glue and reseal the envelope. Luckily, it's just addressed to the principal's office, Madison High. I can type in Mr. Conklin's name above it. Why should we do that, Walter? So that Mr. Conklin thinks he's gonna get the old heave-ho and start acting like a human being around here. Boy, this'll be the rib of all time. Now, let me at that typewriter for a minute. Hand me that glue on the desk. Here, Walter. There. All set. Gee, Walter, you got a mind like Mac Lavelli. <laughs> I don't remember assigning two of you to this detail. Oh, what's that you were about to place on my desk, Denton? This? Mm. Oh, it's just a letter, sir. Uh, Miss Brooks gave it to me. She didn't have time to open your mail yet, sir, but I'm sure she'll be Stop back in time babbling to... babbling and hand me that letter. Yes, sir. Oh, I've got to be running along now. Oh, one moment. I may have some more chores for you, boy. First, I'll see what the Board of Education has to say. Uh, it has come to the attention of the Board that you have been flagrantly dictatorial in your dealings with the... <laughs> <laughs> and also, Oh. Better go now. Yes, sir. Come on, Walter. We'll see you later, Mr. Conklin. Yes. Maybe. Come in. I appointed a student teacher to take charge of my study period, Mr. Conklin. Now I can get right to your mail. Uh, uh, one moment, Miss Brooks, before you sit down. Yes? Let me dust that chair for you. There, now, that's better. Now, are you, are you sure you'll be comfortable in this chair? I'd be happy to get you a cushion if you want me to. 
Uh. <laughs> it has always been my warmest desire to make, take the burdens off my teacher, make them as light as possible. If you have any suggestions which might help me achieve this desire, you have but to mention them, and I am your willing slave. Your wish is my command. I can't recall rubbing any lamps around here. <laughs> now, you just forget about that nasty old correspondence of mine. I was just teasing when I said you'd have to go through all my mail. You, you toddle on out, out to the grounds and sun yourself for a while. <laughs> then when lunchtime comes, meet Mr. Boynton. I know you're fond of him. And have a nice, leisurely luncheon together. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to toddle along now, but first there's just one question I'd like to ask. What is that? I don't know who you are, but what are you doing with Mr. Conklin's head on? <laughs> Here's a nice table by the window, Mr. Boynton. Oh, it's coming, Miss Brooks. Hey, the cafeteria is pretty crowded today. Here's your tray. I don't have much of an appetite myself. In my second period, Mr. Conklin came into the lab and brought me a bag of donuts and a bottle of milk. He said anyone who worked as diligently as I did needed more nourishment. That's funny. He insisted that I take a walk around the campus and get some sun. I wonder what's gotten into the old... Uh, what's happened to Mr. Conklin? Maybe he flipped. Flipped? An undergraduate expression. I can't understand this sudden metamorphosis myself. Well, he started off the day by roaring into my lab like a wounded bull elephant and asked me why my cages weren't ready for the clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaign. I, I tried to explain that I, I couldn't possibly paint them because I didn't have any Dutch boy. Couldn't you have used a brush instead? <laughs> Dutch boy is the name of the paint, Miss Brooks. But he wouldn't stand still for any explanations at all. Just bark, get it done, and stormed out of the office. And then, less than an hour later, he was back feeding me donuts. Well, maybe he's just yellowing with age. A mellowing. Uh, pardon me, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, but could Stretch and I sit down at this table with you for a minute? I suppose so, Walter. Oh, we're glad to have you, boys. Well, thanks, Mr. Boynton. I've got some news for you, Miss Brooks, that'll enhance the enjoyment of your lunch a thousandfold. But it's a deep, dark secret. You and Mr. Boynton have both got to promise you won't breathe a word of this. Well, I promise. What's the secret, Walter? Do you promise, Miss Brooks? Here's a fork. Take some blood. <laughs> it's about the letter Mr. Conklin got from the Board of Education, saying he'd be replaced if he didn't stop acting so... so... Flagrantly dictatorial in his methods. Yeah, to both the faculty and students. What? No wonder he's been so sweet to us all day. But suppose Mr. Conklin finds out the letter's a phony. A phony? A phony? Not so loud! <laughs> nothing phony about the letter. It's perfectly legitimate. Except that it was sent to Mr. Darwell six years ago. Mr. Darwell? Mr. Conklin's predecessor. Yeah, Mr. Conklin's... Yeah. <laughs> I just typed Mr. Conklin's name on the old envelope, glued it up, he came in and read it, and voila! A human being instead of a ramrod. <laughs> Well, don't look now, but the ex-ramrod is bearing down on us. Well, I better be leaving now. No, I... you don't. We're in this thing together. Well, I've got to go paint cages. If you act suspiciously now, we'll all be painting cages from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just relax. Treat him like an equal. There's nothing he can do about it. Ah, uh, what a happy sight it is. Teachers and pupils breaking bread together. <laughs> Care to rip a hunk of toast with us? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I did want to chat with Miss Brooks for a moment, if I'm not disturbing anything. Oh, not at all, sir. Please sit down. Park over here. Yeah, flop. <laughs> Thank you so much, boys. <laughs> Miss Brooks, as you know, I am a great believer in the power of meekness and humility. Therefore, in front of your friends, I come to you hat in hand to seek a favor. Poor Mr. Conklin. How the mighty have fallen. Quiet, boys. What is it you want of me, Mr. Conklin? Miss Brooks, you have much influence with the student body as well as the faculty. I wonder if you could get them to see me in the same light that you do. Aren't you in enough trouble already? <laughs> that is, I... I, I, really... I, 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 I know what you mean, Miss Brooks, and you're right. 
I have acted the martinet at times, but it's only because of those confounded mottos in my office. On every wall, I'm confronted with signs, spare the rod and spoil the child, respect through power, law of the jungle. They, they goad one, Miss Brooks, whip one into a frenzy of ambition until the real me is submerged, snowed under, suffocated. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> well, why don't you get rid of some of those signs, Mr. Conklin? Well, a- an excellent idea, Mr. Boynton. Perhaps I could replace them with more humane and genteel parables. I'm open to suggestions on that score as well. How about, I have been a marble-headed monster? <laughs> Walter, that's very rude. On the contrary, Miss Brooks, it has quite a ring to it. In fact, it might come in handy as a reminder. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, uh, Please, I... please, Miss Brooks. Well, if you say so, Marblehead. <laughs> Music to my ears. I've always been ready to criticize others for their shortcomings. Perhaps if I had a list of my own to refer to each morning, it would help me be more tolerant. Do you think you could compile one? It might take months. <laughs> Oh, you Walter Denton. (laughs) You know, Miss Brooks, I don't believe I've ever mentioned it before, but I love this boy. I'm sure you do, Mr. Conklin. I can tell by the way the veins stand out in your neck when you say it. (laughs) Well, I'm serious about this list of my shortcomings, Miss Brooks. I'll be deeply grateful if you bring a list containing all your complaints to my office as soon as possible. Now, remember, Miss Brooks, don't try to spare my feelings. Give it to me with both barrels. You'll be helping me in the end. Mr. Conklin, I can't think of anything I'd rather do with both barrels. (laughs) Well, I've cleaned up those old files for you, Daddy. Thank you, Harriet. You're a dear, sweet girl. Do you feel all right, Daddy? As well as could be expected, Harriet. Let me clean some of this junk off your desk. You don't need this old letter anymore, do you? Old letter? What old letter? This one, from the Board of Education. The envelope is postmarked 1944. 1944? Let's see that. Ah, uh, ha! <laughs> <laughs> they must have taken this from Mr. Darwell's files and typed my name on the envelope. What are you talking about, Daddy? Harriet, your daddy has been the victim of a monumental hoax. But now the shoe is on the other foot. And believe me, this is the foot that knows how to use it. <laughs> ah, it must be the committee. I want to see them alone. Harriet, please leave by the other door. I'd rather stay and see what it's all about, Daddy. I don't care what you'd rather. I'm at the helm of this ship. Go. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> Come in. We uh, brought the little reminder for your desk, Mr. Conklin. Oh, oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Forgive me for not rising. Without my glasses, I didn't notice that a lady had entered the room. Watch, watch that, fella. (laughs) Indeed, I will. Now, if you'll be kind enough to read me your bill of particulars concerning my various infamies... We're all going to read some of it, Mr. Conklin. Will you begin, Miss Brooks? Thank you, Mr. Boynton. Whereas I, Osgood Conklin, principal of Madison High School, desiring to improve relations between myself, the faculty, and the student body... Your turn, Walter. (coughs) I do promise to keep the following ever before me as a reminder of past sins of which I am heartily ashamed. And which I ain't never going to repeat no more. (laughs) Splendid. Splendid. Please continue. Wait till you hear this. I readily admit that on many occasions I have acted like a pompous, puffed-up, ill-tempered, adulpated blowhard. Forgive me, but it seems to me you've omitted maladjusted. Please don't interrupt. That's in the next paragraph. (laughs) Now, where was I? Adulpated blowhard. Oh, yes. Adulpated blowhard. And on other occasions, I have bellowed like a bull... Screamed like an elephant... Hissed like a viper... Snorted like a buffalo... And otherwise exhibited the behavior of a maladjusted nincompoop. Oh, 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 there it is. (laughs) Now, before you go any further, I'd like you all to sign this document for me. Oh, we already have, Mr. Conklin. Oh, good, good. Then perhaps you'd be kind enough to autograph this other manuscript sent from the Board of Education in this envelope postmarked 1944, 
and intended for my unfortunate predecessor, who doubtless had to contend with just such perfidious malcontents as you, who stand quaking before me this very moment! Keep <laughs> the high ground, boys! The bridge is out! <laughs> Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap? Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Having expected a one-way ticket to Devil's Island, I thought the punishment Mr. Conklin meted out was comparatively just. However, it was after 7 o'clock that evening before I got home. Why, Connie, I was beginning to get worried about you. Where in the world have you been all afternoon? I was doing a little writing, Mrs. Davis. Writing? What were you writing? Oh, I don't think you'd be interested. It's not your type of stuff. I'm interested in everything you do, Connie. Please tell me all about it. Well, if you insist, Mrs. Davis, but you'd better sit down. This may take quite a while. All right. (laughs) There. Now, what did you write? I wrote, Our principal is the best principal that any school ever had. Our principal is the best principal that any school ever had. Our principal is the best principal that any school ever had. had. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists prove in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.